What's going on, everyone? Lauren Sissler here with AO.com, hanging out with my man, Cole Kublik. You can find him on Jocks Radio, Three Man Front, as well as the SEC Network. And we're going to break this thing down. Auburn, Samford, week 13 of the college football season. And Cole, first and foremost, I just want to get your take. You watch the Georgia day- game. You obviously break down film. You sort of saw when things unfold. Obviously, uh, Georgia ended up winning that game 21-14 um, after a late comeback from the Auburn football team. They weren't able to quite put it together there in the final minutes. But with that being said, what were your biggest takeaways from that performance from the Auburn Tigers? I think first and foremost, just the inability to find a rhythm offensively because we saw some new things early in that game. Some new routes, the slants to Seth Williams and how they relied upon that was a little bit new. There was even some RPO stuff Mm -hmm. over the middle of the field that was new that we haven't really seen a lot of in this Auburn offense. And then it felt like it went away for two, two and a half quarters, and then it kind of came back. And I think some of the success when it came back was because of how the Georgia defense played the Auburn offense. But you did find a little bit very late in that game, and you just wonder what part of that can they replicate for four quarters, or at least close to four quarters, to be able to find a little more continuity. But to me, Lauren, this is a rhythm-based offense, mm-hmm. and they have to be able to find that and then sustain that. And it's kind of been the story of the entire season. They'll be great in spurts, and then it'll go away. And then it kind of comes back, and they're pretty good, and then it's gone again. So for me, heading into this game against Samford, I think that should be task number one, and maybe put a couple of other things on film for Alabama to prepare for before you face off in the Iron Bowl. Yeah, so I want to see continuity. I want to see balance on offense. Obviously, red zone offense is going to be critical as well. You know, this team being able to convert to points. Um, you know, and again, the hardest part about that is is there's not really going to be a, a gauge or a meter really for that against a Samford football team. But I do think, uh, you know, Auburn has a chance to kind of go out there, find its rhythm, figure out what they need to do, Put Bo Nix, see, look, here's the thing. Bo Nix is no longer the freshman quarterback, obviously. And so, you know, again, you can't put all this on his shoulders, but certainly if Alabama or if Auburn wants to beat this Alabama team in two weeks in the Iron Bowl, they've got to figure it out on offense. We know the defense, like, we don't even need to go there because at this point the defense is playing the way the defense needs to play. Uh, what I want to ask you as we flip the page to the Iron Bowl, I know we're, we're obviously getting ahead of ourselves here, But how does that dynamic change now that Tua Tagovailoa is not playing? How does this game change for Auburn? And how do they kind of expose Alabama for who they are? Obviously, both teams banged up, but in that in that regard, being that MAC-10 is going to be the one under center now for Alabama. Who? MAC-10. I don't know who that is, but Mac Jones. Mac-10. Mac Jones definitely is different to prepare for. I think first off, what did we say the ankle injury? How would that affect two of the most? It was his mobility, his escapability, the way he moved around the pocket and was still able to stay accurate down the field. That's where he's super dangerous. Obviously able to complete other passes at the same time, but I think what you do is you take away the ability to be accurate, get the ball out quick, get the ball out on time, and give those receivers an easier chance to create explosive plays. And one thing that I don't think Mac Jones has that Tua had is taking a five-yard slant or taking a 15-yard dig or taking certain routes that normally a guy might have to reach back for or a guy might have to reach up for, and that play just goes for eight or 12 or 15. Tua had the ability to put the ball where they're catching it in stride and it's an easier chance for them to turn it into 80 or 60 or 40 or 20 on a regular basis. You're not going to get that with Mac Jones, and I think – we talked about Auburn's offense having timing and rhythm. That RPO stuff that two is so good at, that doesn't just happen in practice. Mm-hmm. That's a feel, that's a sense. There's a part of that that I don't think you can just replicate by putting the next guy in. It's not gonna be as easy for Alabama to generate explosive plays because the quarterback just does not have the same capabilities. This is not a knock on on Mac Jones. He's, he's a good football player, but Tua was an exceptional, special football player that did things that we have never seen an SEC quarterback do. All right, so that brings us to the predictions. Again, we come back to this game, Auburn, Sanford. So getting away from the score prediction, we we, we feel like Auburn will handle things well. Uh, I mean, if you're going to give a score prediction, how many points do you think Auburn's going to put up? I would say 48-10 if I had to predict this game. Coach Hatcher will have a plan. Yeah. They'll, they'll, I think Sanford will find a few things. little hatch attack. Yeah. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. little no, 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 no. That too. little hatch attack. 
Um, balance on offense. How much do we expect to see them to run the football against the Sanford football team? I don't think this is going to be a game where Auburn goes out and runs it 60 times. And it's just ground and pound, ground and pound, ground and pound. Because, like I said before, what do you really learn from that? Right. This defensive line, this front seven is going to be totally different than what you see against Alabama. My biggest concern right now with Bo Nix, Lauren, is when he gets – to the when he gets to the back of his drop, if that first read is not there, he's looking to leave the pocket. Mm -hmm. You saw it against Georgia, you see it against Florida, you see it against LSU, and I understand he's, he's young and some of this is still new, but I don't believe he trusts his protection right now. And if you can give him 25, 30 pass attempts with legitimate straight drop back throws. Maybe that helps his confidence a little bit heading into the Alabama game because they're going to they're going to give you a pass rush. 